After seven months, nearly 500 interviews and 300 written submissions, Australia's sex discrimination investigator painted a toxic picture of workplace misconduct. Over half, that is 51% of all people currently in Commonwealth parliamentary workplaces, have experienced at least one incident of bullying, sexual harassment or actual or attempted sexual assault. The investigation was triggered by rape allegations made by a parliamentary staff member. This report exposed a culture of bullying and sexual misconduct, declaring that one in three staff in federal parliament had experienced sexual harassment. On top of this, Kate Jenkins says the problem is largely driven by power imbalances, gender inequality and a failure to protect victims who speak out. There is also a worryingly low level of reporting indicating that it's not safe to speak. Only 11% of people who'd experienced sexual harassment in a parliamentary workplace reported their experience. The Australian Prime Minister was quick to respond. He called the report shocking and says there's a need for higher standards in Australia's federal parliament. Like anyone who works in this building, I, I find the statistics that are presented there of course appalling and disturbing. I wish I found them more surprising. Um, but I find them just as appalling. The Prime Minister is now under pressure to act on the recommendations, including better protection for those victims willing to speak out. Sarah Clark, Al Jazeera, Brisbane, Australia. Well, let's bring in Michelle O'Neill. She's the president of the Australian Council of Trade Unions. She joins us now from Melbourne. Michelle, this really goes to the heart of working culture in Parliament. I know alcohol has been identified as one of the drivers, and many have also criticised the lack of women in senior roles. In your mind, what are the factors that have been driving this kind of behaviour? Well, the first thing to say, of course, is that Parliament as a workplace is a high-risk workplace, but it's also the case that it's a microcosm of many other workplaces all around Australia and, in fact, the world. And what this inquiry found is that fundamental to um, the high levels of harassment, assault and bullying was power imbalances and, in particular, gender inequality. So the fact that uh, it is a power fueled workplace um, adds uh, uh, turbochargers, if you like, what is already what we know behind many cases of harassment and, of course, inequality, which is the imbalance of power between women and men. The majority of cases of uh, harassment and assault and bullying were experienced by women, but not solely by women. Mm -hmm. So there is uh, an issue that's a systemic issue within our Parliament House, but also within all of our workplaces. Well, we just heard Scott Morrison there say that he wasn't terribly surprised by these findings. Now, if that's actually the case, why hasn't something been done sooner? Well, that's exactly the question for Scott Morrison because uh, his government commissioned an inquiry into sexual harassment across all workplaces in Australia more than two years ago, they received the report that was done by the Sex Discrimination Commissioner, the same person that has done this report into Parliament House. And Kate Jenkins at the time had made 55 recommendations that were comprehensive, that were about what needed to change in, change in the law as well as in behaviour that would mean that women were safe at work and that all workers were safe. And instead of implementing all 55 of those recommendations, the government did nothing for more than 12 months until there was a public exposure of an allegation of rape within Parliament House and then women across Australia took to the streets in marches in March of this year, the March for Justice movement. And it was only in response to those many thousands of women and their supporters taking to the streets that the government finally responded to the first report. But instead of implementing it, they in fact chose the really low-hanging fruit. They only implemented some of the weakest elements of the legislative changes and not the core ones that will make the difference. They failed to implement the legal change that would make employers responsible for preventing sexual harassment, mm -hmm. which is where we need to go. Uh, Michelle, given the history here that you've just described for us, are you now confident that the recommendations of this new report will actually be implemented? No, I'm not at all confident about that because we have a history now of a Prime Minister uh, and, in fact, a government that... Uh 
talk is cheap. They often talk about being concerned about safety of women and safety in the community and safety in workplaces. But when it comes to the crunch about using their power and their um, capacity to make laws and change the culture as well as people's rights, they back away from it. So we are very concerned that, again, there'll be lip service paid to this mm -hmm. rather than the urgent changes that are needed. I mean, this is disgraceful. One, it, Parliament should set a standard that uh, is the highest possible standard as a workplace. It shouldn't be a high-risk workplace. It should actually be an example for others to follow, but instead we see the opposite and we see um, this is entrenched not just in the power imbalances that I spoke about before, but also in the conditions of work that are systemic there and around our country. So one of the other things the Commissioner found was the impact of insecure work. And when you have growing incidences of jobs that are casual, contract and insecure, that makes harassment, violence in the workplace and gender inequality worse. And this government has made changes that have worsened women's job insecurity and job insecurity generally in our country. Michelle O'Neill there, the President of the Australian Council of Trade Unions. Great to get your expertise and thoughts with us on Al Jazeera. Thank you for joining us, Michelle. Thank you very much.